now we're ready to install the oil pump and it's, it's always a good idea to loop the oil pump gear a little bit too because it will run dry for a, a few seconds before the oil pump actually picks up the oil. And that's, uh, it looks like some people think there should be a gasket there, but there is no gasket. That's metal to metal where the uh, oil pump um, mates up against the block, right? That's right. And there is a gasket between the oil pump and the pickup tube. Because that's actually a vacuum point where it's, it's sucking the oil up. And that place is, let's see here, right there, right, well, hold on a second, yeah, right finger in a different place right there okay now what we're going to do here we're going to check now that the oil pump is installed because this is indeed a stroker assembly we're going to make sure that uh, everything clears and we have a pretty close to an inch of clearance there so we should be fine and there's a couple of tight spots one is where the uh, one is where the rod comes close to the cylinder there and uh, right here will be its closest point and it, if it does indeed come closer than about 50 thousandths to the bottom of the cylinder you would have to go in here and grind relieve the edge of the cylinder there to get at least 50 thousandths clearance there. That one looks like it clears by an eighth or so. We've got about an eighth of an inch clearance there which is really comfortable and of course I like to look at all of them sure. because castings are not always exactly the same and uh, one very important thing with with strokers is that that clearance is reduced there because of the length of the stroke moves the the center further and on the other side clearance problem would be on the inside of the cylinder. As you notice here we've got about an eighth inch <clears throat> about an eighth inch clearance on the bottom of the cylinder also, which is an ample, ample clearance there. Kind of hard to see but we can feel in there. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Gary is. Uh, we've got with a little contact cement here. We've uh, cemented the uh, gasket in place on the block, and there's a little critical place here that should be pointed out that that butts up against the uh, seal surface there. Otherwise, there'll be a leak. And the pan itself. Then we just lower it on. And Gary is already. Uh, Put a dab of uh, uh, lube on the, both the front and the rear seal, and the pan has no sealer on it. And we're ready to bolt it in place. Oh, okay. okay, go ahead, Gary. Right. We've got the pan on, and the motor turned back up. Now we're ready to install the valves. And, uh, we lube the valves a little, and then the, the valve guide slides on, and then you've got the spring, and the retainer, and the valve locks. Gives us a, an assembly, and we'll put the valve and locks and spring all in as an, as an assembly. We lube up the guide a little bit. And now that has the rubber seal in place on that one, Gary, or is this, that... No, that's this, the, the exhaust, it, you, you might or might not, might use, or might not use a rubber seal. You don't really need one on the exhaust because there's no vacuum on the exhaust. The intake has quite a bit of vacuum in it when you decelerate. So it's required that you use a seal on the exhaust, on the intake. Okay, so we got the exhaust there. And we've already pre-lubed the uh, lifter there. We dropped the entire assembly in. 
and the same with the uh, intake and we lube it and seal up good. That went in amazingly easy. And then <laughs> we've got our locks that our lock horseshoe. the horseshoe locks that lock the guide in. And the guide is actually up sitting up too far. If you look down in there you can see the seal on the guide. And the guide has to be pulled down right. against the spring and then the lock retains it in place. Got it. So we get our, Gary's going to get our special valve tool, our flathead valve tool. So it holds the engine still. One, one down. thing now on the intake valve. This one a little more difficult because we have that rubber seal. in the horseshoe in the proper position and see why you need that long bar so got the, those two valves locked in and uh, again we adjust them At this point we'll get a chance to see how those little holes that we put in earlier on the block are used to hold the lifter still while we turn the adjusting screw on the lifter. So now we're ready to adjust this valve and we see that we have a, a, a hex key, just a hex key in place here protruding through that hole, picking up the lifter to hold that lifter. Uh, stationary while we adjust the adjusting uh, nut on top. Gary, this is uh, we're setting the intakes at twelve thousandths and the exhaust at fourteen thousandths. That was a little loose. So the nice thing about that little hex rod is it keeps things stationary down there for all practical purposes. There, so we got a nice. Nice 12 thousandths and, 12 thousandths and foot. I forgot to say so, but obviously you want the lifter in the, on the heel of the camera in the lowest position. And then we'll do the same thing on the exhaust, except that the clearance will be 14 thousandths for that one. It's a little difficult to see, but uh, when we look down the uh, intake port here, 
we noticed that uh, Gary had cut the uh, guide at that 45 degree angle that we talked about earlier such that the edge of the guide uh, mates very well with the bottom, uh, floor of the port for minimum flow obstruction. And we also note that there's no uh, the rubber seal is not protruding above the surface, so that was a successful installation. Okay, Gary, where are we? We've got the pistons in and the valves in. We've got a coat of a sealer on the head gasket, so at this point we're ready to put the head on. All right, and then what do we, there's a little thing we probably should point out before we put the head on, uh, that most of the bolt holes on the flathead go clear into the water jacket, so it's important to uh, we'll seal each and every bolt when it goes on there. We'll put the head on first. We're sitting out. We've got a temporary couple of studs in here to, uh, for uh, gasket location and to temporarily locate the head. Well, it's too bad we have to cover up those pistons and valves. Yeah, and those pretty head gaskets. Ooh, there's something. Okay, and then we got, uh, we're using cap screws on, on this particular one, so we put a little dab of oil under the head there, so uh, to make it a consistent torquing. Then we seal the threads on each one. Since they do screw into the water to ensure that there's no water wicking up around the threads, we, we use a, a non-hardening sealer on it. That way you can retorque the heads later. Right. Because on the flathead, the factory recommended three retorkings, and uh, on the supercharge engines, we actually do five cold, hot, cold cycles with retorking in between. So we repeat that process 24 times on this engine because we have a 24 stud engine. And then uh, Later on, we'll adjust uh, these, uh, finish adjusting these valves and do the driver's side. And we'll show the torquing sequence in a moment. Okay, at this point, uh, Gary's installed the head and we've uh, just uh, uh, lightly loaded the bolts here and then we'll torque them in place. And there's a couple of schools of thought on that, but what Ford recommends and what Gary does, we start in the middle of the head and torque the uh, and, and move crisscross and outward as we go. And usually, uh, Gary, do you do how many passes you make through there? I usually make three passes. I, I've got them set now at about 10 pounds, and then I'll torque them to 30, and then to 50, and then to 55. Okay. And 55 is a typical number used on the aluminum, and it's, it seems to be good enough on the iron, too. Although Ford used... Uh, uh, you could use 70 on the iron. 65 to 70. Right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll go ahead here and just watch you do a few of those. Okay. So we're on the first round, and that's 10 foot-pounds, Gary? That, it's 10 already, and this is 30. Okay, this is 30. Notice we're crisscrossing and slowly moving outward on the head. That way no part of the head is trapped in an uncomfortable position. We want our heads comfortable. We want to be comfortable. The worst thing is that you use no pattern at all. And it's also the most likely to result in skipping some or not properly torquing some. That's all 19 of them. Is that right, 19? <laughs> yeah, close enough. Actually, that's 24 of them. 24 of them. And if you count while you go, you that way you you know you got them all when you get to 24. Now it should be noted that when we use the particular sealer we did here on these cap screws. Uh, that reduces the torque requirement because uh, normally Ford just, uh, or some people just use the oil on the threads. In this case, the Permatex uh, number 14 is also a lubricant as well as a sealer. 
which means we get the proper retention with less torque. And then after the engine is running, uh, we'll do heat it up and cool it down and retorque it again and do, do that for a total of five times. Ford recommended three times on, a, on their normal applications. These are not like a mod, the gaskets here do take a set and you can tell when you're done when they quit the torque quits changing. Alrighty. So Gary, what's the next step after we're done with this head here? We'll install the valves on the other side, install that head, but before we do that we'll determine top dip center for this particular one for the to mark the pulley. Correct, to mark the pulley for the blower we we need to do that before we put the other head on. So we can locate top dead center again and make sure we mark the blower pulley in the correct location. Alrighty.